Three, one, 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 Something to the inside. He got oh, Doyle's hard oh, wreck and one car on the roof. Doyle, upside down. Now, that will oh, there they go! Back wreck up front! Oh my Big gosh! Crash. This is a track blocking crash. Air Maroon is careening out of control. Three, Saunders attempting the slide job. He gets sideways. Both of them are sideways. Might open up the door for that number 58 or Dominic Howe, but this is why. Side by side, all the way. Who is gonna get it? Gonna get it. They tore across the wire. Let's get the turned. Car, one with it. One with it. Oh, there's a wreck in the back. One car with the yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's Harry Crandall is barreling out the back straight away. Oh! Yellow, yellow, yellow. Acting hard into the barrels and almost goes over. Now he goes over. Yost in there as well, and acting barrel rolling down the bank. One, Jeremiah comes oh, down! No. Oh, Jeremiah comes yellow down! Pile. And a big, big pileup, and one is gonna involve at least half the field.
the Ice Car TSP, or no, not TSP, Corey Hart's Media Cup Series has uh, gone pretty, uh, I, I don't have much to say about it, it's just these have uh, been very wild super speedway events thus far this season, and we are set for round three, where we take the Xfinity cars out for their first go around in the Super Speedway Series. I'm Liam Sheen in the booth due to my suspension from this series, and uh, I'm joined by two commentators that you're familiar with, Dewey Schramm and uh, Benjamin White. So, uh, yeah. Anything you would guys would uh, like to talk about tonight and what you guys think you'll expect from this race? Well, I kind of feel bad for you because you came in uh, with the points lead and you learn after the... Uh, Darlington race that you're not even going to be racing here tonight, so it throws a whole wrench into the points battle here because you're not, you're no longer going to be in it. You've got other guys that uh, you know, have to take this opportunity and capitalize on it because, as we saw last season, Mitch Hobbs ran away with the championship after the early races. So uh, it's a lot closer this time. So we'll see uh, whether uh, it'll be closer this season or not. I've got my eye on a, a very talented driver that we have not seen race in Ice Car in well over six months. That is the 65 of Dylan Alt. He is back after a long absence, one of the best drivers that this series has had in the time he's been here. So I'm curious to see how he'll do in his first race back in the league. Yeah, he's got 16 career wins, if you can believe that. That's that's how many times he's won, and it just shows how dominant he he was when he, he, he ran this league. Of course, uh in the truck series and the B car and uh, the cup car as well. So a jack of all trades, you could say, especially on the, the road, road courses. If he was here for IMSA, I think he would have ran away with one of the championships, but he wasn't and uh, he's back now. So we'll see exactly how he does here tonight. It's a super speedway, so anything can happen. Yeah, and you talked about points earlier, dog, and we're going to have a look through these points, as you could see. Uh, me being at the top of the chart, but the asterisk uh, implies not eligible for tonight's event. So as you can see, it's Dylan Basin and Michael DiMaggio going to be the two guys finding out with Sartaj Mon in a close third. And Carson Poindexter may be banking on a few uh, poor races. And uh, any names that you think uh, stick out? Tyler Connors. I am very surprised that he's been able to uh, come out of these first two races with 11th place in points but do we also see several of your drivers up in those top spots and points what do you think have to say about that yeah i try to stay humble about my team's success but hey you got three spm guys in that top 10 in the points so hopefully those guys can work together and get all three of them really great finishes here tonight hopefully gabe allen he's a bit deeper in the standings but hopefully he shows up as well and hopefully it ends up being a really good team effort here tonight at daytona fortunately gabe has called it quits for the rest of the season so Sad. We, won't, we won't be seeing Gabe Allen uh, for a while because uh, he's got some personal stuff to take care of. But Best of luck to him, of course. Yes. Uh, but Liam, you also have a lot of teammates uh, in this series as well. Yeah, Evo and uh, SPG have uh, really um, shown their strength as a team this season with uh, me and Ryan Kendrick's 1-3, uh, I think. Yeah, 1-3 last week from uh, Fuel Strategy. And... Uh, it was just, uh, it really shows that uh, teammates really matter in this series and how important they can be to, uh, you know, uh, someone's success in this, uh, you know, championship. And as you can see, we're looking on track. Christopher Wheel has also been very, very good in this series and working together with others. Because he's not really one of those guys that likes to make en enemies with other people. So I'm not surprised at all that he has really uh, stepped it up with the... Uh, Super Speedway Series this season, as you see, as he's slowing down. But, yeah, uh, Chris. Yeah. yeah, Chris, one of the cleaner races, of course, in Ice Car, always treats everybody else in the series with as much respect as he'd like back. So, always a great guy to work with if you can get the opportunity to, not just at Daytona, but, you know, uh, and every other track we go to. And there you see Ezekiel Reyes on pit road, our, uh, the Ice Car owner, going to take a Flash here tonight in the pool of Ice Car Racing, so we'll see how Mr. Owner does in his uh, Summer Series debut. Yeah, yeah. It's, been a while. it's been it's been a very long time, as you can see qualifying is about to get started, so we're going to have time show up on the right side of the screen as they happen. 
And as we're just gonna watch Zeke make his uh, lap around the track, and um, as you can see, like qualifying is very important for these races. So, who do you think is gonna be most likely to make it in or not make it in? Well, you really can't put any names on the outside looking in because it just depends on how well you do on the first lap because you got to build up as much speed as possible for the second lap. That's one that actually counts, but. I do know some guys that have qualified really well uh, last season. Christopher Wilde won several poles in the Super Speedway Series last season, so it won't be surprising if he wins a pole here tonight. But Ezekiel Ray is also very good at Super Speedway qualifying. I think he'll be strong, but uh, I think maybe we could see a surprise here. As you can see, Joe, one. Joe Berge with a new sponsor this week, Fox, as he's aborting his outlap. But we're going to have a look at Zeke's outlap and see what he can put down here. As you can see, he's going to run the very, very against the wall just to make sure that, you know, he can get as much speed as he possibly can. And, yeah. Yeah, a bit surprised Joe Burgey not running his uh, flagship Red Bull colors that we're all accustomed to seeing. But, yeah, Hunter Johnson and Carson Poindexter, the two pole sitters up to this point here in the Super Speedway Series. Of course, those races with the trucks. And Hunter won at Daytona, and Carson got the pole at Talladega. So, a bit of a variety here in the poll winners we've seen so far. So we'll be able to see here who will add their name to the poll winner list. But the main objective here, not even just to win the poll, is just to make sure you qualify in that top 30. Because if you're in the top 30 by the when qualifying's over, you do not have to go through that dreaded LCQ, which I think six or seven people will unfortunately DNQ in tonight. As you can see, Ezekiel Arias putting down his first lap, and it should slide out right on the screen. Ezekiel Arias goes to the top, and that's not what you really want to do on your first lap, as uh, uh, I'm not sure who that is. Louis Galvin, one of the names we don't see often in this series, has made his way to the top of the chart. And as you can Lots see, we're just gonna it. we're just gonna swipe them all the full name out so everybody can see them. And, Matthew uh, Klein up there in third already. Yeah, Matthew yeah. Klein with a really great lap, but that's not really what you want to do on your first lap, so we're going to see what he can do as far as his main lap goes. I see a lot of shuffling on the leaderboard in these next couple minutes, uh, these people putting down lap times. We're going to have to see who's going to get the pole, but uh, what I was going to say earlier was, uh, you were talking about everybody that had the pole, they wanted the trucks. This is an entirely different kind of car. So they're going to have to, you know, get accustomed to qualifying in this car. And with that single car practice, it sort of helped them, you know, get qualifying runs in. And uh, that's why uh, we're seeing some of these guys that have practiced those qualifying runs coming to the top of the board. That's Kyler Wynn, who is currently sitting on the pole. That's a really solid lap for that. I'm not sure what number he is, but a really solid lap for Kyler Wynn. Looks like Brody Gardner now slides himself down into second place. So an interesting... Group of people up at the top row here that we don't. Yeah, they're, they're the numbers, but a lot of guys in that top 10. You see Dallas Myhand in the 48, not someone we see fairly often here in Ice Car, but a solid lap for him up so far. You see Garrett Hess there in third as well as we slide Glenn through the H. field. Glenn, Glenn Bundren now puts himself into 10th place. Yes, and we'll keep scrolling through the field here, but. You see all these guys right here, 35th on back. They all have to go through the LCQ because only the top 30 are guaranteed a spot in tonight's field. Ryan Kendrick putting down his lap. Your winner from last week, he's obviously not tracking towards the pull. Uh, as you can see from the green, as you can see also Bridger Olsen on his lap, and so is Frank DeAngelis. So it's going to be very close to see who gets in and who is out. And it looks like Zeke is comfortably in at the moment with a ninth place qualifying effort. I won't be surprised if we see that again here, but we'll see what Ryan Kendrick's going to put down for his second lap. He is currently 47th, but where will he go as we go through here? All the way up to 27th 27. for Ryan Kendrick That's and 28th. Still. That's going to be super close to see whether or not he gets in. Alex K. Great's also on the track in that 017 car, making his lap for proximity racing he hasn't really been really good at uh super speedway qualifying so it's gonna be very close to see if he gets in we're gonna see what kind of lap he can put down here not enough 36 lcq for him unfortunately see a really solid lap for that 26 and nick roten he's up in that fifth spot here 
Nice. So that's 26 has got some speed. And you see Cole Woody, the Daytona truck winner, also up there in the top 10. All right, we're going to have a look at your starting grid for tonight's event in this LCQ. So as you can see, Lewis Galvin on pole position for this last chance qualifier. It's going to be very interesting to see what kind of uh, race we're going to have tonight and see how desperate people will be to make the race. And uh, as we scroll through the field, James Youngman, Blaze McKinney, Mark Frimpong is the first guy out, William Schmidt, the last guy in, Regan McAlloy and uh, Frank DeAngelis, Justin Johnson, Eli O'Quinn, and Andy McDowell, Chris Warner, round out your field. It's going to be very close to see who gets in and who's out of this uh, event. Surprising names in the LCQ. William Schmidt, we've seen him be very good on super speedways. He's in this LCQ. Same with Chase Bonser, Frank DeAngelis. I mean, several guys that really have a good shot of winning this race. They're not even guaranteed a spot in at this point, so they need to be working hard and make sure they stay out of trouble here in this LCQ because, uh, I mean, I don't think we're going to go without a wreck here. Also, Seth Rawls as well, very strong last week, so they're, they're going to have to get in via this LCQ, and only 13 people are, so we'll see who exactly who those 13 are. Yeah, we're going to have a look at your race info for tonight. It's at the Oval Track Temp. You guys can read all that stuff off, but uh, I can't really see it too well. But um, uh, commentators Liam Sheen, Benjamin White, and Dewey Schramm are going to be in the booth with, uh, you know, giving this race to you guys. Uh, as you can see, the lights are up on the screen um, just to signify the uh, flags. But uh, overall, what do you guys expect from this LCQ and how desperate do you think people will be? Well, the LCQs typically are a wreck fest, so I would not expect otherwise here. Of course, between the Super Speedway Series we did a few months ago and this one, most of the time, as much as it is avoiding the wrecks during the race, it's also avoiding the wrecks in the LCQ. But the real challenge is how do you want to hold back and try to avoid those wrecks, and how do you also want to balance that with staying up front and trying to make sure you're guaranteed a transfer spot? So the LCQ is a very risky game. And it's a risky game of chess, so who is going to play their pieces right and get themselves in? As you can see, William Schmidt back here in that Chad Fincham-inspired paint scheme. He is the last guy in the race right now, so he's going to have to do whatever he can to claw his way forward to get in tonight's event. And uh, he's obviously one of the Ice Car's better plate racers, and last season he just got struck by bad luck over and over and over again. So we're going to see if we can turn around for him tonight. And uh, overall, maybe... Uh, a very surprising effort from Matthew Klein to qualify all the way in fourth. Um, obviously, he hasn't been able to qualify in on qualifying time just yet, but he's been getting closer and closer every week, and he's actually sitting quite comfortably in points right now, at least for uh, what I would expect from him, and I am assuming he's quite happy with his uh, effort this season. Uh, just not quite there yet. Line behind him and Sartaj Man, who came in here fourth in points. He's going to have to work hard to get in via this LCQ. The pace car is pulled in, and Bridger Olsen is going to choose when to go here. All right, and your qual and your race will uh, actually have the entire field on the left side of your screen. You can keep track of who is in and who is out on the scoring pylon. Looks like Chris Warner in the 73 did not start tonight's event, so one less car that will be battling here for. 13 transfer spots as one car almost gets in the wall here in turn number one. That's the 30 of Lewis Galvin who's quickly losing spots here. Yeah, Lewis, he's probably trying to go to the back and just wait it out because uh, these races usually end with a big wreck. And Daytona being way narrower than Talladega, it's just going to be uh, very interesting to see um, people's strategies to try to keep themselves in the wall. Oh, in the wall again. Ooh, the 30. Oh, what? Watch Bring out, guys. Ooh, I think he, oh, he's he still slamming the wall. He might have a real problem. Just trying to keep it out of the way here, but Ooh, Alex Gretsch. Close corners up front. Up the middle. Yeah, close. Alex Gretsch, you said moved up the middle. He got a good push by Jeffrey St. Clair. Those two have gotten in front of the field right now as a complete lap number one. As you can see, the lap time sliding out on the side of the screen. Alex K. Gretsch to the lead. Didn't take him long to get his way up there and ran the fastest lap by over a tenth of the race so far. As you can see, some people pit starting from the, you know, with a one minute lap so maybe people are checking up and just trying to keep their noses clean so far but uh overall everyone seems to uh go without a hitch thus far in this race 
Jolson moves back to the outside. He's going to pull right in front of Jamie Youngman. As we turn three, Jeffrey St. Clair kind of out of line right here. I think he's trying to move high, but he's going to stay behind Alex Stretch for now as Mark Rimpong moves up to the third position with the car behind him. Uh, that inside line is show, showing their stride right now. Uh, being by far the dominant line. Yeah, yeah you, you see Mark Frimpong there in that 10 car. He was so close to winning last week at Talladega, but unfortunately he ran out of fuel in turn four of the final lap. So that 10 car definitely on a mission of redemption to get a much better finish and try to actually finish in first place this time and not run out of fuel again. Yeah, we go back to your battle for 13th. Harry Grindle's last oh, guy in. Oh. Very close. Oh, wow. Contact up front. William Schmidt has fallen to 13th or 15th as he is not in right now. But Harry Grindle is slowly making his way forward and his way into night's event. Matthew Klein isn't actually taking his strategy of falling to the back and just letting everyone wreck as he's having a way he's tough time. Twirly, though. He's yeah. Oh, dear. Oh, he's, watch out, Harry. Yeah, he's Close having... Richard's actually retaking the lead here with that check up on the inside. Bridger Olsen was able to get clear off that outside line. Now James Youngman leads the outside line. He's getting a good push from Sartage from behind. Matthew Klein making a very, very scary uh, moment for everybody else as he's struggling to hang on to his car. But, uh, yeah, it's... Yeah, I, if I'm the other drivers right now, I'm scared shitless. <laughs> oh, boy. I mean, several drivers we've seen just very loose in the draft. You can see right there, Jeffrey St. Clair almost gets turned, and there's a check up on the inside line, but that's going to help that outside line move forward, and that's James Youngman leading it. Sartage behind him, and then Seth Rawls third in line, but that inside continues to be led by Bridger Olsen. He started on pole here and has uh, held serve for most of this race. Yeah, that 95 nearly lost in the middle of the corner and wiped out guys in front of him. Uh, Seth Rawls making his way in the fray right there. Uh, just with the nature of these Xfinity cars, it's hard to make the outside line work. Yeah, the three cars we're racing here at the Super Speedway Series, the Xfinity car is definitely the hardest to draft with, and those guys on the outside, unfortunately, are learning that quickly here. But the inside, definitely, of course, stronger as a result. But, yeah, and that 53, as a result, he was like the only car that made the outside successfully work, and for right now, he's still... Uh, happening to ship here in the turn number three. Yeah, the outside line is actually starting to make their way forward with James Youngman in that number 80 car. Uh, he's, been, he's been slowly making his way forward as that 95 isn't really able to stay on the bumper of the 81 as he pushes Bridger Olsen in that 53 car to try to keep him up front and in the lead. Alex Gretz is a pretty good pusher right now, but he moves to the outside. He says, I want the lead back, and we'll see who Jeffrey St. Clair is going to side with here, but James Youngman is actually going to be able to take that on the outside lane here, so that's going to trap Jeffrey now on the inside, but that inside's getting a good help now as one car gets loose. That Whoa, is that's Matthew Klein. He almost uh, got into somebody back there. They end up saving, I think that was Justin Johnson that about got wrecked right there, but side by side down the back straightaway as they head to turn three, we're neck and neck. There's no advantage. Yeah, huge, huge moments. Oh, go ahead. Hey, you see William Schmidt there in the 79. He's still below that transfer spot. He's now in 17th place, so with only two laps to go here coming to the line, that 79 needs to make a move and he needs to make it quick in order to get himself into tonight's main event. Yeah, okay. two laps to go right now. Big checkup. Huge checkup up front as William Schmidt is trying to make his way into the event, but up front is uh, Bridger Olsen leading tonight's uh, last chance qualifier as Alex K. Grants is trying to make his way forward. Um, he's one of the guys that usually go for the win as he Whoa, makes a man. huge aggressive pinch there trying to get the 95 to, you know, lay back. And it just didn't work out for him. But uh, as we're halfway down the back stretch. We're coming to one and a half laps to go as the 53 has been dominating this entire race tonight. Looks like you know, Youngman and Gratz got disconnected right there. So the outside's going to fall a bit back here. Ooh. As they're coming to the white flag for tonight's LCQ, Bridger Olsen's led most of the laps, and we'll see if he can lead the last one here tonight as well. Yeah, Man. Andy. Andy McDowell's oh. the last guy in, but it's going to be very interesting to see who can sneak their way in. Oh, we make it wide. wide. And he makes it Stop work. Out. And that is not what Regan McDowell wanted. Yeah, that might shuffle him out of tonight's main event. He was just 12 points before that. Oh, car on the wall. The that is the smacks point, the wall. But he keeps oh. it going. And Jeffrey doesn't... St. Clair goes to the top. 
You might oh, these guys are way out of shape as they head to turn three and four right now. Jeffrey's like he's clear Aggressive of everybody, dog. but now it's oh, is so loose in the oh, middle of the corner. Watch out. Here we come off turn number four. We have not wrecked yet, and we're coming to the checkered flag on the LCQ. These guys are going to have oh, to make a Oh, they're wrecking. Oh, there they go. Big crash behind. William Schmidt Saint turns to number four. Oh, win it. Who will get oh, in? There they go. Everybody wrecks, but Jeffrey St. Clair is your LCQ winner. Oh, my God, Blaze McKinney. Oh, my. Yeah. And William Schmidt is the last guy in tonight's wow. event in that number 79. He got what a, what a run. What a, out. what a clutch moment. And the streak of winning or getting in the races will unfortunately end for Matthew Klein. We're going to step aside as we have to wait for the official race to start. But we're going to have a look at your results. And I don't believe they'll show up so because it's not an official race. But uh, we're going to step aside and wait for the main event to start.
broadcast is sometimes reasonable. You know, it's All right, welcome back to the broadcast where uh, we're going to have a look at your starting grid for tonight's event. And it's going to be Kyler Wynn on pole, Brody Garner second, Garrett Hess third, Malachi Drake fourth, Nick Roten fifth, Cole Woody sixth, and Dallas Myhan seventh, uh, Jack DeAndrea eighth, and Zeke Rias ninth with a very impressive uh, return to ice car. Well, one of the rare starts he can make tonight. But uh, Glenn Bundren will round out your top ten. If you, uh, Doggy, if you want to take us through uh, 10th or 11th through 20th. All right, Christopher Wiles starts 11th. He hails from Canada. Oops. Diego Moscato 12th. Uh, Oops. Oh, we're going, we're going way through. I the field went next. way too far. Wait. Whoops. There we go. <laughs> well, we, there we all go. right, let's let's see who else we got. We got Latham Joiner in the 13th position. Hunter Johnson in 14th. Then it's Max Urich 15th with Mitch Hoth 16th. Caden Atking 17th. Zach Um in, in the 18th spot. Dylan Alt qualifies into the. His first start in about six months. He's 19th, and Michael Maggio's 20th. Do we? All right. You see 21st, Kilo Hankins in the 72. Dylan Basin, who's, for all intents and purposes, the new points leader now in 22nd. AJ Bain, 23rd. Nick Indelicato, 24th. Joe Burgi will start in 25th. Peter Kenny, 26th. Trey Shuttlesworth, 27th. Ryan Kendrick will round itself out 28th. Jeremiah Bethune, 29th. And the last car to qualify in on time, Trey Patton, will round out your top 30. And 31st will be Jeffrey Clare. Bridger Olsen, 32nd. Um, Math Mark Frimpong will be 33rd. Alex K. Gretz making a rare qualifying effort as he seems to get the bat luck bug every single time in the LCQ. Blaze McKinney will be 35th. Harry Grindel, 36th, as you can hear some cars pit starting on pit road as of now, so... Uh, Sartaj Mon, 37th, James Youngman, 38th, and uh, Seth Rawls, 39th. Andy McDowell will round out your top 40. The last three guys on grid here tonight, that's Chase Bonzer, 41st. Regan McCauley, in 15, uh, 15 is 42nd, and then William Schmidt was the last guy in. He will start dead last on tonight's field, 43 drivers. Yeah, yeah Schmidt's very... got some work to do, of course, and... Unfortunately, six or seven guys, seven guys, unfortunately, did not make tonight's show. We don't have those listed, unfortunately, but Chris Warner didn't know one of them. He didn't even start the LCQ, but... We go. Yeah. Oh, are we going already? Yes, oh, we yeah, are. Going already. Oh, yep. geez. Pace cars in. Kyler Wynn will lead us to the green flag. You can see the lights are going, and we are underway here at Daytona. As you can see, your ticker is scrolling on the top of your screen. As, one car dropping back already. Yeah, my one hand. car is dropping back. I believe that was the number 41. Dallas, uh, my hand. Yeah, my, now it's Dallas, my hand, and now number 41. As you can see, Christopher Wheel in the actual 41 making his way up through the field with William Schmidt actually already up to 21st. Lots I see a lot dropping. of guys dropping back. Now I see Wild, one of those guys, uh, that Napa car. I'm not sure who that Napa car is. I see Blaze McKinney dropping back as well so some early precautions here is of course only one lap into this 60 lap main event and it looks like mitch hobbs you see in that pnc scheme uh, a, lot, a lot of guys already on the inside kind of bottom feeding here and you see very few guys up on the outside but those are the uh what, what should we call those cars up on the outside anti-bullet cars i'm not really sure what to say about those yeah adventurous they're kind see. of working with each other on the outside if you can see that it's a line of three anti-bullet cars up on the top, but there's Mitch Hobbs, and here's uh, one of the custom number drivers there, and here's Kiloa Hankins in that GoPro scheme. As Mitch, we head down the back straightaway on number two. As you can see, Mitch Hobbs up here, and just in front of him is Ezekiel Rios as one car. Whoa, he dropped That's back Kyler quick. Wynn. Kyler Wynn. All set to drop back. And as you can see, there's Diogo Moscato in that number 94. Uh, DQ Mullen <laughs> paint scheme. <laughs> There oh, we if go. I can just find his number. That's um, incredible. Can't oh, that. bit of a block there at a turn number four by that white car. I'm not sure who that was, but there you see Diogo, and there's another one right there on top of him, the 55 Brody Gardner. So we are too wide with DQ Mullen cars here going to turn number one. And look who your leader is, Garrett Hess, taking no time to get to the front of the field in that number 86 car. 65% uh, fuel, I believe, here tonight. 
and it's going to be a very uh, interesting way to see how people strategize as even more people jump back. I believe that's Kilo, Hankins, and Zeke. Yep, and who's that on the outside going to take the lead down the back straight away? That is Cole Woody in the DQ Mullen car. Going into turn number three. He's got help from Nick Roten in the 26 in that Supreme I wrenching car. Brody Garner third in line right now, and I think that's AJ Bain. Check out that Prox train coming up. Two or three of them. Caution, yellow. Oh, no, 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 no. That was on accident. Whoops. Oh, <laughs> I was just trying never to... mind then. We have no caution. No, no caution. I just... Lead tonight's race. Yeah, I accidentally hit manual caution, so my bad. Yeah, we and... totally didn't just have a caution, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> quickest caution. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe that. Cole Woody, you're uh, the first day to one. Three wide. wide. Now to turn one as Roten gets shuffled out of the mix. Oh, oh, oh on, really big right moment right there. As a bunch of Prox cars are actually getting their way into the fray here tonight, a strong showing by Proximity Racing it's to like get their zones in the field. Five of them. Yeah. Oh, right here. <laughs> the lead right now into three. Yeah, Perhaps. Cole, what are your day to oh, right huge down. moment we have there. Hunter Johnson making contact with Trey Patton. Is he going to save it? Other cars trying to avoid, they all save it. I cannot believe that. Yeah, big moment right there. Right there as, well. as you can see, some cars are lapped down. Latham Jr., yeah, Malachi Drake. Actually, all the way back to Ezekiel Rios, he dropped out of the race, actually. I don't oh, believe... Oh, really? Yeah, Whoa. just... Wow. That is not the... Uh, down 22 spots and 31st. But as you can see, Garrett Hess giving a big shot to the 914 to Cole Woody. Your Daytona winner in the truck series, so it's a very uh, strong showing for uh, Cole Woody. Maybe he can go for two for two at Daytona. Yeah, Cole definitely knows... Oh, oh contact! Huge wreck! Chase Lodger involved. Big the moment. The first caution of tonight's race will come There's out the after a wow. big crash. Happens down and the back straightaway into turn number three. Brody Garner got out of shape on the outside, and wow. the pack flew apart down the back straightaway. We're going to see what happened here on our replay. Check out that beautiful infield road course as we find the replay. Oh, God. It's not letting me find it. Uh, Started with Hess and Brody Garner. Like. Yes, yeah, somebody see, got Brody. wicked out of shape on the back straight. Yeah, Gino, okay. Hess spun down to the infield, I believe, but man, Brody took a wicked shot to the outside. Right about here. Looks like Hess came up off the apron a little bit, and I'm not sure what that was about, but. Yeah. Actually, it was right about here. Oh, Brody, Brody came, came down. Came down and, and right I'm... into the outside wall goes that 55, and a couple Prox cars, I believe, also with damage from this incident as you see get hesco off-roading see chase oh bonzer chase bonzer big air in the 81 right there his back end now comes up to chase this night chase had to make it in through the lcq and now he's junked within the first 10 laps of tonight's race so unfortunate for that 81 yeah alex k great's also involved hunter johnson making a nice evasive move down there and uh yeah cole woody will cycle out as your leader with uh garrett hess actually no that would be alex k Gretz. In second, I believe that was Trey Patton that was involved. But uh, we go back live. And uh, as you can see, your leader, Cole Woody, uh, will anyone come down pit road? And Garrett Hess actually got away with uh, pretty minor damage out of that. Just a trip through the grass and maybe yeah, a little bit of a ding. Been, only got doored, so it could have been a lot worse for guys like Garrett Hess. There you see somebody with no hood. He's definitely going to have to get back there. I think that's Trey Patton. Yeah. You see, uh, ton of cars are in. That's Dylan Alden for service. Hunter Johnson, AJ Payne, I just see right there. He's two laps down. Yeah, as you can see. If... He was involved. Jack DeAndre is in. Mitch Hobbs is in. Nick Roten there in the 26. He will get service as well as Jeffrey St. Clair. I mean, I'd say about half the field just came into pit here and top off on gas and get some fresh tires. Rare start by Trey Shuttlesworth to make a uh, appearance in the Ice Car Cup Series. Or not Cup Series, Super Speedway Shootout. Um... Yeah, so a quite rare start for him to uh, show up here tonight, but uh, we're going to have a look through the field. Dylan Alt, that is not the 42, he's his custom number, but uh, it is his uh, Sim Performance Group Toyota. He has that number 65, not the 42, but uh, as you can see up front, I don't believe there is an actual 42 in the race, so maybe you guys won't I get too... there is. I think, oh, think Drew Patton's the 42. Yeah, Patton was given the 42 because I think 01 might have been... I think Trey gifted the 01. I couldn't remember to who, though. But... That was Hunter Ellis that he gave the one Yes. To. Hunter Ellis is not here, so I'm not sure why I gave him the 42. Either way, he's going to show up as the 01 here on the screen, but he has no hood, so tough break early for Trey Patton. As you see, his 
Crocs teammate Michael DiMaggio behind, he came in uh, minus one in points to those uh, points leaders. So it's imperative for guys like him and Dylan Payson to have a good night tonight. Uh, continue going for that points. As I, man, they just ran each other under caution. Which, the, the start to this race has been rather wild. Yeah, it's been a quite chaotic start with a unusual leader up front with Cole Woody. Um, I don't know about unusual. He, I mean, he won the season opener, so last time we were here, he ended up winning. So I wouldn't say unusual, but and he made his way to the field pretty early there. He's not necessarily the most common leader in the race oh, here. Yeah. As I was incorrect about Zeke, it was just a scoring error with my ticker, but he yeah. is not lapped. He is actually very smartly uh, staying out of the... Staying out of the way and not uh, getting himself involved in an early wreck, as there usually is always an early wreck in every ice car race. At, no a, at a super speed of course. Race. Yeah, yeah, this is uh, obviously no exception tonight. Looks like AJ Bain out of tonight's race, as well as Brody Gardner and Chase Bonzer. So, unfortunate break for that 81, who I said earlier had to make his way through the LCQ, and unfortunately his main event is over here. Just a handful of laps in. Yeah, well, had it and, and, what? Uh, he got Bonzer, yeah. Uh, Bonzer came right back up the racetrack. I guess didn't hold the brakes and got nailed by AJ. And that's uh, sent AJ to the garage. So his bad luck streak continues. If you saw what happened last week, you could tell how bad a luck he has. So, I mean, yeah, AJ was on the gap trying to clear it, and he got yeah. yeah. Bonzer came up and clipped him, unfortunately. And that's racing, unfortunately. It yeah. happened. Yeah, but we're see. getting set to go green here once again. Pace lights are uh, off here. So Cole Woody, Alex K. Gretz, Garrett Hess, Trey Patton, and is that Bridger Olsen in fifth place? I no, believe Bridger. that is. Yeah. Oh, I no, that's know. Nick Roten. That's in the Nick Roten in the 20th. So your top five here for the restart. Yeah, Nick qualified in fifth place, so great start to that 26 is night as the pace car will dive down pit road here and we are back green here at daytona and they work down the trial here cole woody gets a good restart over the 17 there down the front straight away they go i can't believe garrett has still is in third after the whole thing that happened there with him and brody garner as we work through turn one right now you see dylan alt third in line right here and Two Prox cars right there up on the outside. Is that Trey it Patton is. without that a hood? Is. He's still up in the pack without a hood. That's something that I did not think it would see. Hood, he's at the try I don't make a move down the back straightaway. I don't he's going to push his teammate to be side by side into three. I don't expect him to be up front for long, but he's certainly making it work in that number 01 machine. That's what I'll refer him to as, as Dylan Alt is shown as the 42. But, uh, as you can see, Dylan Alt making, wasting no time to get his way up front, and the guy who is the last guy in the race, who started 43rd, is now in the top 10. Uh, William Schmidt making a strong run up through the field in this race. Alex K. Gretz was like fourth in the LCQ, I think, and he's already up in the second position, so that just shows how fast you can make it up through the field here at Daytona and in the Super Speedway Series in general. We work down the back straightaway right now. That's Cole Woody continuing to lead the race, but Alex K. Gretz getting a good push from his hoodless uh, teammate right there at Trey Patton. Dylan Alt slides down to the inside. It's going to fill the hole that Nick Roden had. Yeah, Nick Roden dropping back. Dropping, yeah. But Garrett has making a strong running. Oh, he washes up just the tag. is not a bad strategy at all. You want to keep yourself out of trouble. But we work down the front straightaway. Cole Woody still leads. We'll see if Garrett Hess is going to make it. Dylan Alt is going to slide to the third position. We work down the front straightaway. And that's Trey Shelton about to make his way into the top five here as he forces a hole on the Trey Cat. Yeah, Proximity Racing made a huge qualifying effort here tonight, getting a lot of cars in the show. I believe there is at least five or six of uh, the Proximity cars in the field. As you can see, a single file train towards the back with another proximity car uh and drop yeah and that would be right back up. yeah hunter johnson back here uh yeah, not really up there with his prox teammates just taking it one lap at a time is dylan alt seemed to have dropped back quite quickly but actually no he just pops back in yeah, but uh and Colt, he's about to take the lead. yeah dylan alt about to take lead his uh first laps of ice car but doesn't no does not get it there 
Yeah. yeah, Cole barely led that lap if you work down the front straightaway. Alex K. Gretz now going to be the pusher here as Dylan Audit cleared him and moved up to the outside. Derek Hess still giving a nice push to Cole Woody. Trey Shuttles worked up in the top by now, and there's William Schmidt. Started 40 30, he's up to six as we work down the back straightaway. One thing I noticed about uh, Trey Shuttlesworth is he's not quite sucking up to the uh, other cars as I have selected the wrong guy, but I'm not sure if he has damage or if he's just laying off to try to wait for the uh, number 86 to get too hot as the 17 makes a big pinch there. That looks yeah, great. A lot of contact there between the 914 and that 42. They are really close here out of turn number four. I think Cole may have washed up just a bit, but no worse for wear, and it looks like Cole will still lead the lap here, but they're a bit squirrely between Cole and Hess. Not the cleanest of bumps there through the trial. Yeah, okay, you look at Trey Pat back there with that uh, hoodless race car. It's starting to kick. Definitely he's, he's not, not going to be able to hang up there for much longer because he's definitely down on power as we can see here, but they work down the back straightaway. Dylan Alt's kind of dropping back from Cole Woody. He did a great deal of pinching for three and four, and I think that can really play in your uh, uh, factor on the last lap if you pinch somebody down and take away their speed. Dylan Alt actually going to get up right alongside Cole Woody for the lead as we work through three and four right now. Garrett has kind of getting off that back bumper. He might be getting hot. Yeah, I think Garrett has to start really uh, worrying about his temperatures as William Schmidt is starting to make his way up into the fray in that number 75 machine at Garrison Holmes Toyota Supra. But uh, as you can see, Joe Berkey also making his way up through the field as we caution. have a caution oh, out. Yellow flag might be a wreck back there, and the uh, field is actually slowing down this time, so there was a crash, unlike that one fake caution that was called. Yeah, the this is not, not sure exactly where the caution is. Here. Oh, oh, right up front. Oh, we have Basin involved. Wow, huge. The point here, and the, there's a custom number car right there. I'm not sure if that's actually the eight car or not. I believe it is. is. I'm not sure how uh, who that is right there. Uh, he got spun and right in front of the field. Basin either got involved or really had to avoid it there. And Oh, more cars involved as well. Yeah, I'm not sure who that was. Oh, it's that was so Jim weird Berge. Berge for a wreck. Is yeah. that Sartaj? Yeah. Because I... Sartaj is up there in points as well. He might have gotten involved as well. Yeah, Sartaj came in third tonight, I believe. Uh, fourth, but... Either way, high in points. Yeah, big oh, moment right here. It looks like Harry Grindle. Caden Atkins in here. Oh, oh, and oh Dylan, Dylan Basin just Basin squeezes on. by. Oh, wow. It. Made it through. Wow. Huge. And I'm, not, I'm still not sure of the custom number. Still not oh, sure of the custom on the number. Right there one there on car flying. Wow. Somebody two wheeled it there. Yeah, that was. He hit that jump area on entry to one. Yeah, that was a... Went for a wild ride down the front straightaway but man i'm not sure who initially got turned right there that custom number that believed was i i believe that was the number eight not sure who the exact number is but it was that number eight dale jr stylized car so maybe aj bang no aj bang was already out of the race ah yeah regardless we'll we go back up front we'll figure out who it is your Talladega winner from last season starting to make his way up into the mix in 11th place. That is Peter Kenny in that machine. And that outlaw Toyota, everybody knows from Icecar, if you've been a part of it, uh, who outlaw is. Obviously an up-and-coming rapper who hasn't really been on the ups, but uh, he's been slowly making his way, a name for himself, and he's been uh, obviously been carried on by Supreme Eye Renting <laughs> and their team, so... Uh, They've been obviously making a nice uh, showing here tonight. Maybe Peter Kenny could steal another win at Daytona. Obviously, first career ice car win coming at this uh, racetrack. Ron series. Long yeah, time that, ago. That's a throwback. Yeah, yeah, Peter Kenny's other ice car victory, of course, came in these Xfinity cars back at the Talladega race of the last season of the Super Speedway Series. So, around a month. Whoa. Go. Man of, yeah, let me just luck into a super few. We went out of strange. nowhere when no one expects me to. So we'll see if he can do yeah, that. For he the didn't luck into that last one. He he drove up there and got it done there. He, so, well, he did. That first so. one was definitely the first. Awesome. Yeah, the first one. We all know what happened there, but yeah, the first one was definitely. Uh, yeah, Eric Kaplinger got uh, a black flag, and you know that we don't talk about that. But it yeah, happened. that was that that was one of the worst black flags I've ever seen, and I'm. I'm still baffled on why that wasn't cleared because the, I mean, the car that he was passing was literally smoking and blowing the engine. So it's just something where you can't do anything about it. But that's Cody still up front, I think, in that 914. 
Yeah, he. Right there, and he's off still second. Surprisingly, he has not made a pit stop or made his way down pit road, so I'm kind of concerned. I'd be yeah, a little I bit concerned too. right now if I was uh, Cole Woody on your uh, fuel strategy. Uh, Cole may have overlooked it a little bit, but uh, you know, 16 laps into this race. As uh, we apologize for that little moment there where everything kind of froze. But uh, up front, as you can see, Zeke making his way through the field. Um, nice little run going for him in his return to Ice Car. Uh, yeah. Yep, behind him. I think those two are working together. So a lot of guys wanting to work with Zeke here tonight. Obviously, he's the owner, and uh, it's not very surprising that a lot of people want to work with him, maybe get him to win. But. Uh, everybody's going to be going for themselves at the end of it. But you see some people coming in and topping off. Peter Kenny, Jeremiah Bethune, among those guys. I uh, wouldn't be surprised if Cole Woody was also in as well because he still has not made that pit stop, as you said. So. No, I Bethune's believe... having some trouble in his stall right there. It's just so, yeah. Malachi Drake, Jeremiah Bethune, and uh, yeah, that those will be it for the people down pit road. AJ Bain as well. And... Yeah, Bain's but still getting repairs from the first incident. So. I, think you, I think he's just watching at this point. He, He's Might already be. said he's done. But yeah, it's we'll tough to for that 88. We've taken the one to go. Cole Woody will lead us to the green flag. William Schmidt coming from 43rd is up to second. Joe Berge third. You've got Trey Shuttlesworth fourth. And the rest of the field coming in behind him. Man, I think this is going to be wild green flag run here. Strong showing by Joe Berge in his newly sponsored number 83 Toyota. Uh, obviously not really had the season and luck. Probably one of the vice cars most unlucky drivers, but last week he got a little bit of a hint of luck. But as you can see, there's a big uh, dent in the back of that number 83 Toyota from the earlier incident. So, um, Bergie's probably not the happiest of campers, maybe with someone Arca breaking into his back end. So, um, we'll see what Bergie can do here coming to this restart. Yeah, Bergy almost won the 87 race at Legacy Daytona, but of course, a little bit about, unfortunately got involved in that huge last lap crash. So that 83 is still looking for his first ever ice car victory, and we are going to go back green here at Daytona with Cole Woody and William Schmidt, your front row for the restart. Bottom side gets an early advantage here into turn number one. Woody with the advantage here, but Schmidt's going to get a big push from that 19 of Trey Shuttlesworth. He might be able to pull even here coming out of turn number two. Yeah, uh, they're still side by side up front. The 95 drops back again as the uh, wrecks have been quite a common trend thus far in this race. But William Schmidt is going to get try to get that lap lead point as he is 10th in super speedway points. So uh, very crucial bonus point for him but probably not the smartest decision to uh, hop down low as uh, the 914 is probably really concerned with his fuel right now but as you can see up front Trey Shuttlesworth is trying to get a push from his proximity racing teammate and will he get the lap lead yes he will the nine uh, the 19 will take the lead away from the number 79 apologies for the ticker issue there with the session time being shown rather than the number of laps remaining so i'm honestly not sure how many laps we have but i think we're there we go uh, yeah lap yeah, 19 so about a third of the way through here tonight so fuel could potentially be an issue sooner rather than later for those guys that have not made any pit stops yet of course cole woody in the 914 one of those in that scenario as gretz gets a bit wobbly there in the turn three yeah obviously um you can see the outside line is way stronger in numbers, but there's a lot of more damaged cars up front, but looks like William Schmidt is going to get his lap led and bonus point as he will get it done and he'll get that extra bonus point that has seemed to be really crucial in the Super Speedway points. See Trey ended a bit high there middle of the turn but he'll be able to get a good run here at a turn number two with his teammate in tow and if Trey wanted to might be able to drop down but with his teammate up there I don't think he would as you can see uh, the engine the from engine. his teammate that's we how get hard proximity engine secrets here yeah as you can see that's how hard the 17 is pushing they but drop. Dylan Alt swings to the outside oh no he doesn't they just Both drop down did. and they shove out that number 42 machine of Dylan Alt so Dylan he's Alt, gonna yeah. be 
stuck up there on his lonesome. I think oh, that's Blaze McKinney up there behind him now, second on the high side. He's a good seed. Seven's had a decent run here so far, and one of the PPM cars, one of the like eight in the field tonight, in third on the high side. But those two proximity cars, of course, they got a bit disconnected from the rest of the posse after that huge early incident. But those two still leading the field here as we're a third of the way through tonight's event. Yeah, as you can see, it seems like a drivers' championship for PPM is out of the uh, uh, out of the uh, chances now. But uh, Michael DiMaggio, uh, I believe he is not here. Or is he? No, he is here tonight. He's definitely in the race. He is in the race. 37th. Oh, but... He may yeah. have gotten damage, or maybe he's just laying way back. We'll see where I'm he is. Trying to find, trying to find Michael. There he is. Yeah, there he is. Yeah. So, yeah, he's, he's hanging way back here. Probably for a good while. I'd expect maybe around lap 40 or so. If there isn't a caution by then, he might try to make people back up front as Cole back to the lead here. A lot of top contenders aren't actually making their way towards the front, as you can see actually Dylan Basin. And uh, if you were me right now, this is what you love to see. Uh, right now, I'm hoping everybody gets taken out in a wreck, but, uh, you know, that's just me. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> uh, you know. That, are you always saying that because you're suspended? <laughs> yeah, I'm always saying that because I'm suspended because any... <laughs> <laughs> Any point they don't get is a positive thing for me. Uh, so as low as, as much as I hate to say it, as the lower these guys finish, the better for me. But uh, man, but, some professionalism. <laughs> <is just like, laughs> uh. Yeah. Uh, but as you can see, the leaders up oh, front. Man. You know, I wish the best for them. But you know, hey, I mean, my I, opinion I is, you know, everyone's entitled to their opinion, and that's just mine. So. As you can see, Dylan Basin making a really strong performance here. One of the best plate races in Ice Guard, as much as I hate to... Finally say that. As much as I hate to see it. <laughs> <and> much... <laughs> Finally decide to admit it there, but yeah, one of the back stretch. Oh, what he continues to lead this race. Ray Shell's worked right behind him. Alex Gretz, a lot of these guys that are up front, they've been up front all race long. These are the guys that they're going to have to... Cole Woody's basically... Have to, beat to get win here tonight but Dylan Alt starts to fall back did you see did you see Blaze McKinney he doesn't even have a rear end so oh we're that's coming up on a lap car going up on a slow car here on the high side not should, sure who that is that is not be an issue Atkins here. in that number 22 machine damage in that wreck I believe he's just down on horsepower and just can't get that draft we're gonna see oh yeah last that, season that disconnected the outside a little bit yeah and but, as we saw last season there's been an incident with a lap car and the driver's lapping him no one's doing a good amount of side drafting here, so even though the outside got a bit disconnected, they're not really falling back that much. Side drafting, definitely one of the key parts of super speedway racing, as we've seen plenty of times in real life where side drafting has led to a victory for somebody you probably wouldn't have thought would have won. So we'll see how much of that is utilized here tonight as Cole gets a little wobbly there in the middle of the turn. Yeah. How long has he been doing for? He still has not made a pit stop in this race, so... Yeah, we're almost halfway through now, yeah. so... We may get, if, if this goes green, he, we're going to get close to that window, and he's going to need to pit soon, so uh, he's banking on another caution, so we'll have to see exactly how it's going to work out for Cole, but Dylan Hall hanging with him up on the outside. These guys have been side-by-side -side for a few laps. Yeah, a big difference from last week to this week is they've extended the amount of fuel that is in these cars, so, uh, you know, maybe Cole is thinking about this, and, uh, yeah, a lot of drivers believe that is a good move. It takes a little bit of strategy out of the picture, but as you can see, people are actually single filing out, maybe trying to save some fuel. Uh, save, uh, save some fuel, as uh, you can see, Zeke Rius, uh making a nice solid debut here tonight. As Mark Frimpong, also one of the nice challengers in the Super Speedway series in that number 10 Supra, uh, Dex Imaging stylized Supra. Obviously, I don't think that is the exact sponsor on that car, as it is not. But uh, yeah, his team. Uh, not sure what that is, RSS. Uh, yeah, but uh, as you can see, Caden Atkins also just kind of unfortunately got taken out in a wreck. But yeah, up front. Yeah, he's yeah, just, just, oh, a little bit of separation. Here, but the main pack up really disconnected a little bit, but you see Trey Shuttlesworth now, the new leader of the race, Dylan Alt now second on the bottom, and Cole Woody now back in third. So the outside line definitely just completely fell apart here as there's only two cars up there now, as Blaze McKinney also down to the inside, as is the 49 of Sartaj Mun, who's quietly had a really solid night so far. On board the number 9-14, they're going to come with a huge run on the 14, or 42 in the 19, but uh, actually he gets hung out to dry. So Cole Woody will not get the help he wanted, Ouch. and Sartaj Mun, another one of the points contenders, 
Uh, making his way up through the field, Blaze McKinney as well as we're running on board with the number 57 machine of Blaze McKinney. Yeah, yes. so Taj came in in the tonight's race, top five in the point, so he needs a good strong run here to move past, you know, the guy that might be leading the broadcast here tonight or maybe somebody <laughs> else, but he's yeah. done a pretty good job of that so far. And man, I, you know, the proximity guys, you see Trey Patton working himself back into this top 10 once Ooh. again, his hole gets a bit loose there. Big moment oh, as, oh, a huge man. moment right there for the number zero one of Trey Patton. Wow, what a moment a that was. Jump up high here, but huge man, save. Trey Good. Patton with some Tokyo drifting here in the middle of turn number three. I think he may just Yeah, it just looks like he just clipped the apron right there. The apron. Slowly just ooh, slid up. Great uh, evasive driving there by William Schmidt to stay out of that. But up front or back live, as you can see, Trey Shuttlesworth has been taking the lead away and he has some teammates to uh, give him a little bit of insurance and uh, his chances There's to There's Alt on the outside. It. Yeah, Dylan Alt making his way on the outside, probably working together in a voice call of Crocs. Uh, as you can see, the 19 yeah. disappears from existence. Now he's back. Uh, but, um, yeah. So as you can see, Dylan Alt, oh, there goes the 19 again. Um, he is yeah, gone. a couple cars have had some blinking issues. I saw James Youngman blink a bit earlier. I see one car gets out of the way. I'm not sure if that's a lapped car or... Oh, that's Cole that just jumped up high. I wonder if he's considering coming in for fuel soon because of course he has not come in yet so perhaps that move to the outside could be a hey i'm coming in soon but of course for that it'll go right back down to the inside yeah people will be pressing their one key to signify if they were about to make a pit stop as you can see a lot of people saving fuel they're not really going for it um quite yet if i if, if we have a caution probably in the next four or five laps i probably almost the entire field will probably come in and top off on fuel and it'll probably just be a huge dash to the end of tonight's race as we're on board with somebody. The not 08, sure it is. like Dylan Basin. That's Basin in the 08, came into tonight second in the points behind Mr. Suspension here up in the booth. Uh, <laughs> so for all intents and purposes, Dylan came into tonight your points leader. So having a solid night here in the top five and top ten and we'll have to see if he can finish there at the end of tonight's race. Yeah, Basin is thinking about finish as high as I possibly can to make as big of a ground as he possibly can on, uh, you know, me and uh, Michael DiMaggio. Uh, DiMaggio, I don't, wouldn't say he's that too good of a plate racer as he seems to uh, just get a lot of bad luck. But, uh, you know, towards the end, if he doesn't get bad, like, bad luck striking, striking him, ah, God, uh, if he doesn't get struck by bad luck, uh, he seems to uh, always be in the mix towards the end as some people uh, not going down pit road but a lot of people sit, uh, sitting down on the low line um, obviously not really entertaining to watch to see a single pile train so thankfully these guys up front are still uh, mixing it up Yeah, Dylan Alt back on that bottom side to the lead once again. Is think that Shuttlesworth now leading the high side of this pack. One of the Prox cars. Actually, it's Gretz up on the high side. Shuttlesworth still on the bottom. So, Mason now up to fourth place. You see Burgie now uh, third up on that high side. So, a couple guys we may not really expect up here or just haven't seen up here in a long time. Having some really good nights. And, man, I still can't believe Cole's in pit yet. Yeah, 31 laps in, and now is a perfect time to step aside for two laps and do a crank it up. So, here we go.
And we're back. As you can see, Cole Woody making his trip down pit road. He finally made the trip down pit road as uh, I believe Dog is taking a step aside out of the booth. Uh, I'm not sure what has uh, transpired there. Maybe Dewey would know, but Cole Woody, his strategy has not worked to keep himself up front, but... Well, we might have just overshot his pit stall too, Ooh. but... Yeah, yeah, unfortunately, Benjamin's internet has uh, gone out, so unfortunately, he will not be returning to tonight's broadcast. Apologies about that, but now we're back here live, about 26 laps to go, coming to, as Cole Woody again finally made his pit stop here, as again, that strategy not working in his favor, as we see a move to the outside here for the lead, that is Dylan Alt back up there once again in the 65, or to you for the 42. See Hunter Johnson in the 12 also has made his way up to the main pack as well. And that 98, that is actually Nick and Delicato in that car. Ooh, 74. the 83 strikes the wall. He's actually the 74, but he's uh, in that high point for Ford Mustang. Uh, but he is slowly making his way through the field as Dylan Alt up front in that number 65 machine. As I guess we'll just refer him to that as now for now, I guess. But. Uh, as you can see, he's side drafting the heck out of that number 17 of Alex K. Gritz. As we're coming up another lap car, that is the 914 of Cole Woody. He is just barely hanging on to this uh, last car in the lead lap situation. Yeah, yeah, tough break for Cole. Unfortunately, that did not work out. But I guess the silver lining is, for at least right now, if a caution were to come out, he would be the free pass recipient. And of course, with that, you'd be able to stay out. Of course, this free pass still goes to the back, but you know, of course, Cole at this point really needs a caution for this strategy to even work at all. But even if the caution does come out, he'll still have to work his way all the way back up to the front again. And you could just tell how much slower Cole is by himself by the change in the tone of the engine. As you could hear, this is the same car, and you could just hear how much higher the pitch is with this car, so. There goes Cole Woody taking his one lap down situation as Dylan Alt making a very aggressive move to the inside, but a lap one point to Dylan Bass, and that is a crucial point that he will need in the championship. That puts him one point up no matter what on Michael DiMaggio. No matter where, as long as he finishes ahead of him, it'll be an extra position. See Nick and Delicato there, a nice strong run for him. He's up to third place now, but pretty much out of nowhere as I think there were really two distinct packs that have now merged into one big one, and that has allowed some guys we haven't really talked about much tonight to make their way up there, and I think that's Blaze McKinney possibly just coming off of the pit lane. Glenn Actually, Bundren. No, that's Glenn Bundren in the 37, excuse me, is McKinney may still be in that top pack, but... A very yeah, so big surprise think... on who made this race. I did not talk about this guy at all when we went through qualifying, but Max Urich, he made the field in that 91 in, in that outlaw Toyota Supra. Um, yeah, that's a, a promotional deal there with that 91. But yeah, he qualified in that top 30. He did not even need to go through the LCQ. So a quietly good night for that 91. There you see his teammate, the 26 of Nick Roten. So perhaps those two could try and work together to make their way to the front as we're down almost just 20 laps to go. Yeah, almost 20 laps to go. A car drops down pit road. Oh, nope, he just pops back up. Just a little bit of a scoring miscue there. But as you can see up front, oh, the 17 got a little loose there from an aggressive shove by his, uh, I guess. Basin. Yeah, Basin made a friend on track, and now he's pushing that number 17. So they're working together. Uh, Alex drifting up. I don't know why. Uh, side drafting. Well, you know, does it exist? Does it not? You know, who knows? But uh, not really as prominent as, you know, uh, it would be in real life by doing the same move. But Dylan Alt in that 65, he is the so the lone guy up front that has tried to clear himself up high. And it just seems like these proximity guys just aren't letting him drop in with them. Yeah, Nick and Delicato, now your new leader. You led that last lap, and now he's dove and dive down to the bottom here. So, oh. Got a bit of a hard shove there from Gretz, but holds onto it. So Delicato, again, someone we haven't really talked about much tonight, but now leading this pack here with coming to 21 laps to go. And those Prox guys have started to reform despite that wreck earlier as Trey Patton and Hunter Johnson have now worked their way up into this main pack once again. Yeah, a little bit of a pack right here with, uh, oh, they are gone, but uh, go up front. There they are. 
But uh, there's a little bit of a strung up pack. As let's see if we can catch them in the turn three cam. But they are about to get get lapped. I believe they have made their pit stop. Here they are. Uh, I believe that is led by the number 25, Seth Rawls. As you can yeah, see, yeah, that's uh, uh, one of the PPM cars in there as well. One of the lot of them looks like this one doesn't ooh. have a uh, front end anymore. Very questionable move right there, but uh. You know, the 914, I believe that is. No, it's just a few PPM cars and the 084. Oh, that's Josh Amon, I believe, in the 47. That's the PPM machine in question here. Back up front, He's still in Basin. Lead change, so that's Basin back up to the front here in the turn number one, all back to second. So the outside's been able to work a couple times, as we've seen quite a few times this race where a couple guys have been able to drop down, but... Not enough where you get like a whole five, six, seven cars just all drop down within a lap or two span. Uh, Peter Kenny must have made his way down pit road because he just shot to the top of the running order. There he is. A couple other people on there as well. Four or five cars joining him on the pit lane for perhaps a few only stop here Ooh. with only 20 laps to go. But yeah, decent sized pack actually just came down. So I wonder if these guys in this lead pack will be able to make it again. I'm not sure where their fuel is. But if they can't make it the rest of the race, this will get really interesting really quick. Yeah, as you can see, last week, you can't stretch it on fuel if you save hard enough. And, you know, last week there was a big upset with uh, a pack literally losing 30 seconds on the uh, main people. As these guys that are, you know, coming Whoa. off that road right here. Oh, big moment. Out. I don't know why he's not on the apron. Yeah, very there. I'm questionable. Sure Questionable situation, but these guys up front, as long as they can group up together, as you can see Dylan Basin making a move to the outside to, you know, avoid them. Yeah, that's Youngman Schmidt and Jeffrey St. Clair, your LCQ winner. Actually, the LCQ winner and the LCQ uh, last transfer spot working themselves together, but unfortunately going a lap down here. Well, it looks like just 18 laps to go, so time is starting to run out, believe it or not, to try and make a move up to this front, but with this whole pack just really split up. This is actually not what I was expecting for this race at all. Yeah, a few guys are actually going to get, you know, out of this lead draft. And as you can see, that group of three cars that we were talking about earlier. Oh, uh, did I hear some tires? Oh, I thought I heard a little bit of an incident up the road. Uh, seems like everybody has stayed fine. But uh, no issues yet as uh, the leaders are coming to lap. Uh, put a lap down on some other cars. That's the four car pack we saw a few laps ago with Josh Amon and Seth Rawls, so they're going to go at least one lap down. So it looks like only 15 or so cars are going to be on the lead lap, as it looks like Seth Rawls is currently scored in 16th place. So if a caution were to come out, there's going to be a lot of guys that are going to end up taking the wave around if those leaders do fit. Mitch Hobbs, your previous season's champion in that number... 89 machine. Uh, these are the last guys. I'm. They're just hanging on to the lead lap right now. Uh, just barely uh, clutched on, as you can see. Uh, Garrett Hess uh, followed in suit within Garrett not being on the same lap with that damage that I believe he got from a uh, previous incident. Not sure what it was though. But uh, Dylan, yeah, leader, Dylan Basin. Yeah, the Ooh, have sketchy a moment a right here. here. It's gonna they shove a three wide. Here oh, they go. This is really tight. Yeah. Close quarters right there, maybe four, four wide. wide oh. Yeah, they're almost four wide between the lap cars and the leaders. I think I think the leaders had to split two lap cars and they were three wide with the leaders in the middle, so not the best of situations they want to find themselves in, but now you see some more lapped cars that are too wide. So now these top four have the a, a lapped car buffer behind them. And is that Max Yurick now at the third place? That is not Max Yurick, that is still Dylan Basin. Max Yurick is a lap he car. down. Oh, he's a lap down. Okay. He has already so made he his has... pit stop, so this could work out for them as long as they just make up really good time on their uh, pit stop. But Dylan Alt is your leader. Nick and Delicato second. These are oh, they now they're come down to make their they... pit stop. Oh, Ooh, near a collision. Lot of people coming down. 10, 12 people. Watch Ooh. out. The contact oh, and that 17 and the 10 oh, miss pit road. Quick. That's going to be a penalty. Oh, oh, oh wow. Ball ball Huge moment. Nobody makes contact, but those two are not going to be able it's pretty much a night over for them as long as they don't yeah, get a caution somebody, someone definitely got a speeding penalty there but fortunately of course i racing does not have collisions on pit road of course if they did there would have been a five or six car pileup on the pit lane but 
at least two or three people there, probably Frimpong and Gretz, definitely going to get speeding penalties for those guys. That is night over for them in all likelihood. But here we see this pack of lapped cars will get their laps back. Cole Woody included in that pack, who was strong car earlier on tonight. And you see a couple cars have stayed out. Looks like Malachi Drake, Christopher Weil. As you can see, here's the leaders. Get out. There they are. Here's, here's the, the leaders pack coming off the road. road. Malachi Looks Drake. Like Smith Wall is actually pit again, so he will not get his lap back. But here's this other pack. You see Malachi Drake and Wild there. I believe those two have not pit yet, but everybody in front of them already has and should get their lap back. Oh, Mitch Hobbs. Oh, ah, good. Close call. Yeah, close call there. Good uh, thinking to uh, not come down and wreck them. But, uh, yeah, that would not see, be good. But Your leader is the number 90 machine right here as William Schmidt is on the tail end of his lap. I believe lap. Uh... The 90 is still yet to make a stop, and so is the 41. So, um, yeah, yeah, Chris, the runner-up in last night's IndyCar race at Indianapolis. So Chris on a bit of a good streak here. So we'll have to see if he can continue that tonight. But uh, you know, I don't, I don't know if he can make it all the way on fuel. And with those leaders coming up fast, it's he won't be able to save to the end either because he'll just get blown by the cars drafting anyway. Yeah, as you can see, Hunter Johnson is your race, or not your race later, but uh, he's in this pack of four, which are going to be caught. These, these were the mom. leaders before the pit stops. Yeah, and big Dallas Hoddle got himself up there. So he leads this mini pack here, and we'll see where everybody else is. But if there's a pack of like 15 or 20 behind these guys, they are definitely going to get caught up. Yeah, as you can see, packs are starting to string out left and right, but... Here is the original pack. It's dwindled down to just these cars as the 41. Ooh, they're coming down pit road, maybe out of fuel. They are coming down quite Chris slowly. Might be out. So that will shuffle the lead somewhere. Ooh. That might be some yeah. blinking. I'm not yeah, sure what's some, going on. Some blinking there, but uh, up there, front. There's here's the lead pack. I think that's for the lead with Indelicato, so that should shuffle this lead of the 74, but there's still a lot of people lapped down. They're all trapped the lap down. And with these leaders pitting, if a caution were to come out, these guys all that are lapped down may not even get their laps back. So a ton of guys are unfortunately going to end up finishing this race just trapped the lap down with nothing they can do. Oh, yeah, there goes a lap car right there, one of the uh, DQ Mullen cars. cars. Yeah. yeah. But it seems like this is going to be the battle right here. As after these guys, I believe it is a... Yeah, that big of a gap between Dylan Basin and the number 90. Yo, know, Drake Ford in seventh, he's going to get caught really quick here. So for Malachi, he's going to have to hope to be able to latch on to this pack that's approaching him and hope he can try and at least maybe a top 15 or so here. Yeah, a little bit of a battle going on. Don't get caught up. Apologies there, but uh, they, they fixed my internet quicker than I thought they would, so I'm back. Let's go. <laughs> Always great to have the full booth here. Uh, unfortunately, Dog dropped, or not Dog, Benjamin White. We call him Dog because that's his name on Discord, but. Uh, dog? Dog. Um, <laughs> dog um, it doesn't matter, but I think if we don't get a caution, this is the group right here that's going to have the uh, best shot at winning tonight's race. Yeah, as you can see, Nick and Delicato, Hunter Johnson, Dylan Alt, Sartaj Mon, and Trey Shuttlesworth. Trey, he uh, won. The, the championship, ultimately the championship deciding race in the Ice Car Skippy Series, one of the closest margins in Ice Car history. Uh, Over your truly in this booth. Yeah, Our some team. lucky sucker was uh, obviously uh, unlucky. Unlucky in that race. Uh, just you know, a lot of memories coming back Ooh, tonight. Hunter's Ooh, Hunter! Hunter making yeah, a move Hunter. to the outside of the 98 or the 74, I should say. Both are gonna get clear. Yeah, they're yeah, gonna both, both of them. Very Ten long run. Go here. Closing time here at Daytona, so moves that need to be made need to be made right now because with only 10 laps to go, time is ticking away here, but Hunter Johnson's been the absolute dominant car of the Summer Series so far. This is, I believe, the 13th race of the Summer Series up to this point. Actually, the uh, 14th. 14th, yeah. Yeah, Hunter Johnson's won like six of them already. Hunter has been on an absolute tear in both the Street Stock Series and the Modified Tour. So now we'll have to see if he can really become a well-rounded driver. Even, Of course, he's a well-rounded driver, but especially in this Summer Series, and see if he can pick up a win here on a plate track. 
leads the all-time wins list with 30 huh. wins. Can you believe that? 30 wins in Iscar. Can he make it 31 tonight? Hunter, obviously one of the guys that, uh, you know, he's really set on winning. And if he doesn't win, it's obviously a night wasted for him in his eyes. So he's obviously really, really uh, committed to winning races. And when just one slips away, he's obviously not really happy with that. But uh, uh, as you can see up front, it's these six cars, I believe. Uh, I'm not couple sure. Of lappers. Yeah, a couple of lappers in the fray here. The ten and the uh, one of the guys that missed pit road. So, fifty. Yeah, the ten and the fifty. A couple of guys with pit road issues with nine laps to go. Coming the eight. Yeah, only five lead lap cars in this group, and then you have to go back six and a half seconds to where Dylan Basin and the rest of these guys are. There's Dallas Myhan in this group. Malachi Drake, Drake Patton as well. Uh, I think I see Ryan Kendrick in there. So. I mean, these guys have really have to work to catch up. Either that or a caution to come out and they could all get back up and we could have a wild ending to this race. But we've hit eight laps to go and we're going to be Those are your leaders right there. We're going to see how long it takes for us to find the other pack. And there they are. So that illustrates how big the gap is. And they're obviously thinking about putting as quick of a lap they can. But uh, Hunter's getting a little bit of a toe from the lap cars that they are catching up front. Michael DiMaggio, yeah, that's a one, three. Of your, one of your points contenders, obviously not a yeah. not the day he wanted or had in mind. Uh, as yeah, far he's as... trying to lay back to avoid the wrecks, but I think he just laid back a bit too much, and that's going to cost the three. It looks like he's currently in 24th place, as looks like Mark yeah. Frimpong, who's a lapped car in that pack, actually got by him right there. Both of those guys are lapped down, so that's two more spots that Michael's lost, but for Sartaj Mon and Dylan Basin, these, these two are top three in points. These are really good days for them as it sits right now. Sartaj, of course, fourth, Dylan sixth, but Dylan's in that second pack, and Another if we don't get a caution, he's not going to have the opportunity to win here tonight. Is that Alex K. Gretz that has a uh, Yes, that right is there? Alex K. Gretz. I think so. And the that, free uh, pass that right might have now. Been a he might have had a drive-through for that. I'm sure that yeah, was a speeding penalty. He was definitely got. speeding. He was there no in there. Way. The current and free that's pass. That's lap went too because he i believe he also sped they both went through the yeah. grass coming to make their pit stops the yeah, current free pass right now is the number 10. so this is a very good situation that uh the 10 is in right now but james youngman you have to go all the way up here to find the other uh the car in front of him so very very good situation that uh the 10 has found himself in just with these pack with this pack and no matter what lap car they catch they will blow right by them good position for the first lap car in line to be, which right now is Mark Frimpong. You see the Maggio's launched onto this group as well as 50 of the moon and a uh, car behind the now a threat. So those four are going to be battling for that free pass spot in case we do get a caution, but man, we're coming to five laps to go. It's been a relatively calm race. I'm actually very surprised just given uh, last year's uh, race, which was just completely filled with wrecks. So uh, good to see here uh, mostly green flag race. We're down the front straightaway to turn number one. We've only got five laps to go. Yeah, I can't believe how anticlimactic this whole race has been. It's it's weird because of course there are those couple wrecks early on, but you know, and and that's not necessarily a bad thing either because you don't usually have a lot of races that work themselves out like this. So this perhaps could be new for some people who really aren't used to these kind of races as. We're on board with Nick and Delicato here. Who? This is uh, Del Hall, actually. Oh, well, you can tell Delicato's from... right behind him. Yes. Uh, oh, here's boy. Delicato. Yeah, Dylan Hall. Dylan Hall's in second place in his first race in Ice Car in well over six months. So that 65 is a hell of a return race for him yeah. and a debut for Summer Series Part Two. As we are down, Ooh. Here just oh, oh, oh. oh that's that's been got lapped right there. Yeah, got wow. It down there. I was gonna say, really good to see Dylan Hall back. Yeah, just four more laps for him to try and make a move around that 12 of Hunter Johnson. But the really interesting part is if Dylan decides to move up to the high side, will Nick and Delicato go with him, or will we leave him out to dry? Looks like he's trying to signal the guys behind him. Himself. Yeah, it looks like he's trying to signal the guys behind him that, hey, let's go. Four laps to go, and he seems to want to make his move very, very soon. Coming to three to go. Time is of the essence here. But it looks like Nick's got... Uh, too much of a gap between oh, him and Sartaj wow. Mon. Is a bit of a something's going on yes, right there. But a little. <laughs> now Sartaj is starting to close in on Nick and Delicato's bumper, so perhaps this could be 
where the move gets made. We'll have to see if out of turn number two, if a couple guys jump up or not. Lots of moving around right here. Well, this we is... hit three laps to go into turn number one. Michael DiMaggio. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. gonna save it. Uh -oh. oh my gosh. Here we go. I have no idea. It looks Thank like he uh, Whoa, may have disconnected. Oh, there he is. Wow. And Dylan oh, gonna move to the outside. Here we go. Yeah. And a good point by Nick and Delicato down the back straight away. And he will be clear into turn two. We'll see if he drops down. He does. The Here two SPG does. affiliates timed that perfectly. So the number 42 and 98, or the 74, have uh, made that move exactly when they had to. As Dylan Alt is, Hunter's going to go to the high side and try to get that push away from that 74. Sartage isn't close enough to Dylan. He says no drafting help right now. Hunter might be able to go right back down to the bottom again. Two more laps to go here at Daytona. As you can see Hunter's on the outside, he may want to try to Gatto's drop in low, here comes down. the 74, two laps to go in this race. Will the 19 have enough time to make that run? Will Nick jump up and try to make a move for his first? Here comes the 98 on the outside, the 42. So Hunter gets left out again here, as they're coming to, coming to the white flag here at Daytona. Nick and Delicato leads this field, can he hold on for the win, but it looks like Dylan's going to stay up oh. high here. He might go to side draft his way to the lead. Big moment back there in the back of the pack, but that won't matter as the 42 is going to make another move to the outside with a 12 of Hunter Johnson making that push. Here comes his teammate and Michael DiMaggio White trying flag. to get a prox car in victory lane. White flag in the air one more time around Daytona. Dylan Alt leading that high side still into turn number one. Nick and Delicato leading the bottom. Who is going to take the checkered flag here? Who will have the drafting help that the other needs? Hunter's giving a big push that 98 coming out of turn number two, but will the 42 have one more shot here in turn number three with that 19 in tow? The 42 and the help. 19 are going to get that little bit of a push on the backstretch. The 42 is going to be a really good help here with that 19. In the three of Michael DiMaggio, he wants to make sure a proximity car can get in the victory lane. In turn three for the final time, they're oh. dead even at the front. Near contact in the back of the pack. Here comes the three. He's going to go to the bottom, push the number 12, the 98 oh in the middle. Boy. Will the 12 go come. to the inside? Here comes, it, here I they think. come to the checkered Dylan flag. Dylan Alt will win, win at Daytona. Wow. Wow. He's back at Daytona. What a race. What a win. He's first raced an ice car in over six months, and he comes Stop back and he scores a win. How about that? Awesome. What Great a finish. What a finish there. And a lot of people are probably upset right now that there isn't a lot of carnage there, but Trey is going to give a congratulation bump. But Dylan Alt, your winner here tonight at Daytona in that number 42 Evo Sim Sport, Sim Performance Group Toyota. And that was a pretty good race. As you can see, oh, wow. A little bit of a super congratulation yeah. bump, but uh, yeah, yeah Mark it's... Primpong's version of a celebratory tap is, I guess. Oh, that, but, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're all just, yeah, they're all just messing around now. But congratulations to that 42 of Dylan Alt on winning his first race back in Ice Car in well over six months. So a huge congratulations goes out to him on a hard-earned win for that team. So. Well, I guess we'll have results somewhere, something like that. Yeah, your results, we're going to go through them here. Yeah, they are. Michael DiMaggio, obviously not your winner. Let me just move over to the feature so we can get those results here. But Dylan Alt, your go. winner here, as the teams aren't showing up for some reason. But what They're I, all privateers tonight. Yeah, everybody's a privateer. So as you can see, oh, Dylan Alt. Right. So we're going to go through your results. Dylan Alt, Trey Shovelsworth, Nick and Delicato, your top three. Hunter Johnson, we're going to talk with your top five here tonight. Uh, Hunter Johnson will be fourth. Sartaj Mott, a big points day for him. He will be your points leader, I believe, by a few points over Dylan Basin. Oh, no, Dylan Basin's right there. So Dylan Basin will be your points leader out, out of tonight with a P7. Dil Dallas Myhan, sixth. Christopher Weil will be eighth. Trey Patton, ninth. Cole Woody will round out your top ten. So you're Blaze McKinney there in 11th, so a decent night for him. Peter Kenny, a nice run for him in 12th place. William Schmidt finishes where he finished in the LCQ, 13th. Harry Grendel, 14th. Defending Super Speedway Champion Mitch Hobbs, 15th. Mr. Owner Ezekiel Reyes rounds himself out, 16th. Nick Roden qualified in the top five, but drops back to 17th. Jack DeAndre didn't talk much about him tonight. He'll be 18th. And rounding out your top 20, Joe Burgi and Malachi Drake. Michael DiMaggio, 21st. Mark Grimpong, 22nd. 
Uh, Alex Gretz, 23rd. Jeremiah Mathun, 24th. Seth Rawls, 25th. Kyler Wynn, 26th. That's your pole sitter. He ends up 26th tonight. James Youngman, 27th. Max Urich, 28th. Glenn Bundren in the 29th position. Kiloa Hankins rounds out your top 30. Yeah, Bridger Olsen will be 31st. Regan McAlloy will be 32nd. Not so nice. Those guys went up two laps down. Uh, a lot of retirees in this bottom half of the results uh, page. Uh, Glenn Bundren, Max Urich. Uh, oh, I kind of missed my mark there. But uh, Regan McAlloy, Caden Atkins, uh, Ryan Kendrick, obviously not a night he wanted. He was a guy that would be in the contention for the points, but I believe with this uh, result tonight, I don't think he'll have any. Uh, reasonable shot at the championship. Jeffrey St. Clair will be uh, 35th in that number 95 car. He made a lot of aggressive moves earlier in the race. Uh, Garrett Hess will be 36th. And we're going to go through the bottom half of your result, or the you know last remaining of the results. Uh, Diogo Moscato, he had a little bit of a uh, uh, little bit of a bounty going on right there towards the um, end of the race, but uh, just uh, couldn't get it done. Uh, you're going to see Zach Ammon in 38th, Latham Joyner 39th, Andy McDowell, not a really good showing from him. He's been really strong at the plate tracks, just couldn't get it done tonight. A.J. Bain, the rookie, will be 41st, Brody Garner 32nd, and Chase Bonser, the lone proximity car in the top, outside the top 40. Anyways, we're going to be back with interviews. We'll take a five-minute break, and we will talk to your top five, and, uh, we will see you there after a chaotic race here in the Ice Car Super Speedway Tour.
All right. Welcome back to the Ice Car Super Speedway Tour. We're here with fifth place finisher in Sartage Mon. Sartage, uh, not quite, you know, there for the win, but uh, obviously a great night for you in the points. Uh, talk to us about your night. Well, um, I started in the back thinking that, you know, just regular strategy, start in the back, just try to lay back there, but I saw some of my teammates going to the front, and I was like, okay, well, no, I'm not going to achieve anything by standing in the back. So pretty much on, I think it was a second restart, I just stroll up to the front, just slowly, sure, slowly, like, started going up there. And, you know, I just kept myself up there, and once green flag pit stops came, I, I came out first, but I had to slow down because I didn't want to be all by myself and lose the draft again. So, yeah. And then uh, when it was come to the final lap, I was trying to get a run on the top four so I can, like, you know, pass them on the front stretch. But Frimpong got into the back of me and uh, almost sent me around, yeah. which which ruined it. But it's whatever. It happens. Yeah, obviously a really great night for you here tonight. Um, t uh, if you have any sponsors to thank, now's the time. Uh, obviously a really great run in fifth for you in the points. Yeah, I would just like to thank PPM and y'all for broadcasting. All right. That is fifth place finisher, Sartaj Mon. Sartaj, great. Uh, good luck for you in the uh, chase for the championship. Obviously a few points behind Dylan Basin, but uh, best of luck. Yep, thank you. All right, and we're going to bring in fourth place finisher, Hunter Johnson. Dog, your uh, Benjamin, you can take this one away. Oh, whoops, almost dragged in the wrong guy. Oh, he is. There he is. Hey, Hunter Johnson, you got a copy? Yeah, I got you. Well, I mean, you led quite a bit of laps there, but just talk about that last run. How, uh, who were you, who were you working with, and how stressful was it those last few laps? Um, we were. I was working with kind of, uh, maybe five of the ten guys in the top ten before the last pit stop. Um, we just decided that because we had enough cars, we were gonna wait for everyone else to hit, and then we'd we'd stay out on track. Uh gain time on them because they would they would be coming off pit road kind of strung out and then pit when we felt like we would only have to take like I think it was five gallons or so fuel make it to the end uh, it worked out for some of us some of us uh, had trouble on getting onto pit road um, but when it came to the end uh, it was it was we weren't re nobody was re really working with each other at that point we were all just trying to uh, get what we could every man for himself there yeah, I mean, that's just the nature of super speedway racing. You work with people until the end, and then you decide, hey, it's time for me to go for myself. But uh, tell me who you were working with uh, in those last few laps. Um, I wasn't. I mean, I'd, I'd worked with Dylan to try and get around uh, Nick because I was kind of overheating. But then, like, as soon as, the, uh, as soon as the outside line started to form, he was gone. He was... Uh, he took it, and then at that point, it was all, all bets off. All right, well, you've had a really good summer series up to this point, and uh, before we let you go here tonight, do you have any sponsors, teammates, anybody you want to thank for this fourth place run? Uh, I got to thank you guys for putting on the broadcast, first of all, and then I got to thank all the guys on Prox that uh, worked, with, worked with me tonight, Proximity Racing, uh, that, that's about it. All right, well, have a good night, Hunter. Uh, see you in the next, you know, summer series races. Of course, 87 series. You're leading the points there. So uh, good luck tomorrow. All right, thank you. All right, that was Hunter Johnson, your fourth place finisher here tonight, obviously looking for a little bit more, but uh, we're going to drag in third place finisher, Nick and Delicato. Uh, Nick and Delicato, you finished third tonight in that 74 machine. You got a copy? Yes, sir. All right, you got a uh, really, uh, really chaotic last few laps there. Um, <laughs> very, you guys were you probably changed the lead, probably half the amount of lead changes in this race. But uh, talk to me about those final few laps. Yeah, it was a ton of fun. Uh, I was gonna follow Dylan into pit road whenever we decided to go, and I, to be honest with you, I thought it was all over when we hit pit road that first time. Uh, we all came out, we packed back up. There's only about five of us on the lead lap, but. At the end there, I pushed Dylan to the lead, and then it switched back up. I pushed Hunter to the lead, and then I don't know if I got the lead. I think after that, Hunter pushed me, and it was basically me versus five other Prox cars at that point. So, uh, no, it was a ton of fun. I'll take P3, though. It was, it was good. All right, and just overall throughout the race, who were you generally working with to, uh, you know, you were quite, uh, I guess, 
in sync with those prox cars as far as pit strategy went uh just talk to us about the entire race overall like were you uh concerned about the wrecks or were you just going for it yeah for the first 20 laps i mean half the field started to check up people dropped back and i was just going back and forth i pitted came back to the front we had a couple i think three or four car wrecks but pitted came back to the front pitted came back to the front and then i hooked up with hunter and we went all the way to the lead and uh i just stayed up front until we pitted on that final stop with i think 15 to go and then uh it was the it was the five of us till the end it, it worked out really well yeah obviously a uh, pretty good uh finish for you tonight and i believe this will help you in the points obviously i don't think you're in contention for the championship due to uh i believe you uh missed a race or two here there yeah uh but obviously not a not a uh, championship contending run for you so far this season, but overall you are going to sh- shake yourself pretty high up in the point standings. Um, anyone you got to thank for uh, tonight's race? Uh, shout out to the new Ford that I'm using. I don't know. That's about it. Thank you guys for putting this on though and commentating. Yeah. Th- thank you uh, for the compliment. And uh, obviously not an SPG uh, Toyota, but uh, obviously a really nice run here with a third place result. Uh, best of luck next week. Thank you. All right, and we're going to drag in second place finisher, Trey Shuttlesworth, in that number 19 machine. Uh, Benjamin, you can take this off. All right, Shuttlesworth, you got a copy? Uh, yes, sir. Well, you ran up front all race long, and when it came to the end, uh, you end up second. How'd, how'd you do it? Well, I'm sure Hunter already told you about our pitting strategy, where it was a lot of yeah. uh, proximity racing guys and ex-proximity guys, such as the race winner. Um, our big... Uh, strategy there was to avoid the hell hole of like 20 cars coming down pit road at one time now we still came down pit road with like 10 or 15 cars and you know a few people died but uh at the end you know there were five of us battling and it was a pretty fun run to the end yeah just talk about those last couple of laps though uh just all the dicing back and forth and then those lap cars uh did you think you had a shot coming to the white flag uh, I would have needed a lot of calamity. Just the, the position I was in wasn't the best for winning a race, but I was in a good position to push someone, as you saw. I mean, most of the last couple of laps, I was like P4, P5, and it's just tough when you're there without having to take someone out. But uh, with it being Dylan's uh, returning race after his uh, prolonged ban, uh, I was definitely happy to get the chance to push him to the win. And uh, I didn't have much of a chance off of turn four because he was still side by side with uh, Indelicato out of four. But if you know a little more time, I would have tried to go for it. But at the end of the day, glad to get a win for Dylan. Yeah, I, I had thought in those last couple laps that you had a good because you did have a couple of lap cars as teammates, uh, specifically to Maggio and Gretz. And I, I mean, I thought you were going to have a shot to win, but you end up second here tonight, your best finish of the summer series thus far. But uh, before we let you go, any sponsors, teammates, anybody that you want to thank uh, for tonight's second place effort? Uh, yeah, uh, first of all, congrats to uh, Dylan Alt, um, and then all the boys at Proximity Racing, uh, Rexford Engineering, uh, All Serve Garage Doors and Openers. Follow my uh, photography Instagram at Trey Shellsworth Photography, uh, Pit Stop TV, uh, broadcasting service, and uh, yeah, that's about it. And uh, of course, you guys for broadcasting tonight and letting uh, Kibboy go out there and uh, have some fun. All right. Uh, good luck the rest of the summer series. If you're showing up tomorrow, good luck there. But uh, just have a good night. You too. All right. That was Trey. Trey Sh- yeah, that was Trey Shuttlesworth, your second place finisher here tonight. Uh, we're gonna drag in Dylan Alt with a triumphant return to the series after a prolonged ban. Um, Dylan Alt, you came home with the win here tonight. Uh, talk to us about those final few laps. Oh, those final few laps are really fun. Like, I never thought the race was going to go green for that long. Um, but it's, it surprised me. It was a super speeder race and never thought that was going to happen. And it actually did. Um, I was working with uh, Prox. I was in a call with them and we were just making plans happen. Everything worked well. And everyone that we had a race against was literally only Nick and Alicato. And <laughs> somehow it worked. And I got the run off the exit of turn four and went straight to the win. It's like, I don't know. Yeah, obviously, uh, it was just you four. Uh, the next guy was eight seconds back with uh, Dallas Myhan. So, obviously, you guys worked out the perfect pit strategy to pass everybody and not have a bunch of calamity on pit road, uh, as we saw some other people have. But um, overall, in this race, what was your strategy towards the beginning? Were you just going for it, or were you just hanging back? I was trying to have fun. Like, it's my first race after a while. I just wanted to stay in the race 
I don't want to get wrecked out. It would have been not that much fun. I'm just wasting I'm here, just wasting time because I'm also running this Spa 24. And uh, yeah, I'm just, I don't know, I'm trying to have fun. And somehow I got up to the win. Yeah, just killing time, I guess. But uh, uh, obviously a nice return for you tonight. Um, anyone you'd like to thank for uh, tonight's race? Uh, just all proximity for helping me and uh, SBG. All right, and that's Dylan Alt, your winner here tonight. Dylan, best of luck in future races, given you run. Uh, yeah. Thank you. All right, that was a chaotic race here tonight. Obviously, Dog has dropped out of the booth after his final interview, but uh, that'll be it for tonight's event. I am Liam Sheen, joined in the booth by Dewey Schramm and Benjamin A. White. Uh, obviously, a very exciting finish to tonight's race. Um yeah, so this has been a very hectic race. Obviously, a bunch of shakeups in the points throughout the last week uh, through either uh, attrition or suspensions or anything. But uh, I would like to thank everybody for tuning in tonight's event. I'm Liam Sheen, joined by Benjamin White and Dewey Schramm, and we hope to see you next week on the Ice Car Broadcast, watching on Max Speed TV, given the next broadcast is on it. So we'd like to thank everybody for uh, watching tonight's race. And this is uh, KMN signing out.